What is going on, everybody? It's Alex coming back at you with another video. And today, we got a one-round mock draft because Amari Cooper was just traded to the Browns, which, funnily enough, was not one of the trade targets on my list. Talk about that video. But still, we'll still talk about it once we get to that pick. I just want to keep it short and simple because, honestly, this doesn't change it that much. But it could possibly change what the Browns do, which could have ripple effects later on. This might correct one of the errors that I did in a previous mock as well. So if you guys do love mock drafts, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and stick around for a while because it's only going to get better. Obviously, once I get a little more time, which should be around summer, we're going to be putting OBS to the test. We're going to look nice, clean, even more professional. Obviously, we got a lot more studying to do on 2023 class, so that should be extremely fun. And if you guys like the USFL content, I know it doesn't get many views, but I still want to put it out there for those of you who are looking for USFL content. Let's kick right into the draft. Number one overall, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they are hinted at potentially even trying to trade for Lyle Collins which is exactly, in my books, a cry for help. You read tagged Cam Robinson, who did not play poorly last year, right? The offensive line was not a huge, huge liability the way it probably has in the past. Um, you guys might disagree with that, but honestly, for I mean, it's Jacksonville expectations. We're not really expecting much. So for the expectations, they actually didn't perform too shabby. And you got a developmental player in Walker Little there. I think that them still being in the tackle market shows that Cam Robinson was brought there to fill a hole for a year and potentially groom a high ceiling prospect. Evan Neal is phenomenal, but I honestly think that how with how good this edge class is, again, you could possibly even get George Karloftis in the second. Boye Mafe, if you want to reach, or Kingsley Nagbari, maybe even the third. You have a lot of options there. Uh, not really at the offensive tackle position. And I did this last time, and I hate it because Evan Neal is so good but it is undeniable the power and just the pure build of Ekem Ikwano because Evan Neal is actually pretty slender now is almost perfect. It is perfect because you can use him as a guard in the short term. He's a perfect build for a guard, but he's also perfect for a tackle. He just needs more time to develop. And I feel like that Cam Robinson franchise tagging is literally the perfect situation for that. Uh, I would probably start putting my money on Ikem Ikwano over Aiden Hutchinson right now, even though I love Hutch with a passion. Number two, we have the Detroit Lions. And honestly, I've been hearing a lot of rumors about Malik Willis being this pick. I do hear a lot of them. I'm not going to pull the trigger on that because I really don't think that the Lions would use it on Malik. I just don't. I feel like that's a lot of smoke for maybe teams to try to trade up and let guys fall. Like, when you think about what's the biggest impact, it's you look at wins above replacement, you look at quarterback, it's a huge one, but also all these teams wouldn't be bringing on a quarterback from free agency with these big trades if they actually believe in this class. The number nine overall pick spent a billion picks just to get um, Russell Wilson, and Russell Wilson is exiting his prime, but still pretty damn phenomenal. I don't blame uh, Denver for doing that at all. But still, it shows that they're not very confident in this class. I highly doubt that a team like the Lions, who are probably destined to be damn near, if not the number one pick next year, would just say, all right, screw it. Let's go Malik Willis. Like when you have Bryce Young and CJ Stroud, yes, I know that there's some CJ Stroud fans out there. I think that, you know, you can definitely take a chance on being wrong about being uh, right on those quarterbacks, right? And when you know that you're going to get someone it was a day one impact, literally a Dan Campbell type of dude like Aiden Hutchinson. You take a shot on that. He is in the 10 yard split, if I'm not mistaken, the fastest out of the out of the majority of these edge rushers. And that's all that matters because how often are you going to see these guys run 40 yards? You see them in that first 10 yard split, that explosiveness. And Aiden Hutchinson is by far one of the best in the class at that. I mean, his arm length isn't Travon Walker size, but I still think he's a phenomenal talent. Number three, this is no bones about it for me. I do think that Laramie Tunsil is going to get traded. And as a matter of fact, I think we actually will finally put that into action in this draft. Evan Neal is going to be drafted here. And when the Texans run that up, there's going to be a team trading for Laramie Tunsil. And it just makes sense. There's actually a lot of rumors pointing towards this, but that team is the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, we're going to have the Bengals trade for Laramie Tunsil here. I'm not the first one to do this. I was talking to NFL RT on one of his live streams when this happened. So we're going to have them traded for a first round pick. 
along with um, probably a six rounder in return. Of course, we'll just toss in like a seventh from 2024 just to get the deal through. So Laramie Tunsil is traded away. Evan Neal comes in to replace, saves a lot of money for the Texans to be able to spend elsewhere. It might happen before, but I mean, honestly, can you ask for anything better? Yeah, Laramie Tunsil hasn't been as in shape as he probably could be. But honestly, he has proven to be a top five left tackle when healthy. And if he is able to stay healthy, I mean, that just shows you're willing to invest in a quarterback. And again, it's a late first. We saw what happened when Trent Williams was brought on after all of his injuries, after everything that was going negatively for him. The Niners are like, all right, we'll give you a shot. And he's proven to be arguably the best tackle that we've seen in a hot minute. So I think that doing that would be great for both sides. You save a lot of money. You get a phenomenal talent, Evan Neal, and the Bengals are able to protect Joe Burrow. So honestly, kick Jonah Williams a right tackle. I don't care. You just, that guy, Laramie Tunsil, is worth a lot. And I think that would be a great move for both franchises. Number 20, or geez, number 24. Number four, we got the Jets on the board. And again, uh, you guys heard this reasoning last time, you know, cornerback is a huge position in terms of wins above replacement. Like when you hit, you hit, right. And you look at the positions on the board. I would be in full favor if they want to go Charles cross here. Honestly, you say that, Hey, we're going to go Charles cross number four. I respect it. I'd go with that all day, every day. I think Charles cross is a lot more pro ready than people think. I uh, just, even when he's out of position, just the way that he continues to fight to get back where he should be is phenomenal he's actually tackle one on a lot of people's boards including mike renner so i have a lot of respect for mike renner i know that he, he and i have different takes but i mean the guy's a brilliant he's a brilliant brilliant analyst and you know charles cross certainly could be this pick he could even be like number three if they really just believe in charles cross i'm not as high on charles cross as evan neal but i am higher on him than ekem Kwanu. but of course you guys know the developmental process we always go ekem so basically you're down to Charles Cross, KT, but also you have to look at who's going to be here at this pick here. And will there be a solid edge at that pick? Maybe not KT level, sure, right? Like you probably won't be able to get someone of KT's talent. You won't even probably get Trevon Walker. But hey, you have two second round picks. What, could one of those be George Karloftis, Arnold Ebiketti, um, even Kingsley Nagbari, Sam Williams, Maijai Sanders, like, could it be one of those guys? Absolutely. It could even be a third round pick, right? So you take that into account. So let's just say, let's cross out KT and Trevon. Then let's look at the offensive tackle group. You ain't getting Charles Cross again. So it's a definitely a big proponent for getting Charles Cross this pick. That being said, I just don't think they're going to draft an offensive tackle with the number four pick. I just don't. And if I'm proven wrong, I am very, very happy, extremely happy to be proven wrong because I would absolutely I would just be so happy to hear that they go after someone like that. But Sauce Gardner is the best player I've ever studied, grading-wise. I think that he is a generational-level talent, and I do not say that likely. I don't. I think that Kyle Hamilton could get close, but a Sauce Gardner has beaten it. Uh, I'm, I'm very tough on my grading scale. Nobody really ever gets a 90. Well, nobody has ever until Sauce Gardner. And I kind of pity-pointed Kyle Hamilton to get there. I finally took that away once I, I rewatched the tape again. And I just realized that it's like, it's okay to love Sauce Gardner more than Kyle Hamilton. And I think that he really could be the best corner in the NFL. His size is perfect. Yeah, you might want a couple more pounds on him, but six foot three, damn near. Uh, crazy, like 33 and three quarter inch arms. And he just sticks in coverage, man. There's, he is just absolutely phenomenal. And this team was like their bread and butter was Darrell Revis. And I think that's my comp for Sauce Gardner. Darrell Revis, I think, ran a 4-3-9 in his pro day. And Sauce Gardner ran a 4-4-1. That's my comp. So we're going to go Darrell Revis 2.0 here. Stick it to the draft board. I think that that would be a prime option for the team. Number five, the New York Giants are on the board. And if Charles Cross is here, you have to take him. You have to. That's just, that's the rule. So we're going to be taking Charles Cross right there. Number six, the Panthers are on the board, but someone is ringing the phone because KT is still on the board. And there, are, there are a lot of teams in here that are ringing the phone because KT is worth the number one overall pick in a lot of drafts. The guy's phenomenal. Granted, he's probably irritated a lot of franchises by his self-confidence, 
and his goals of making sure that he takes care of himself. And again, we're in like, this is a corporation. Like, the NFL only cares about itself. It tries to say it cares about the players. It really doesn't. We're it's all, it's a business at the end of the day. Right. Um, and KT is just a person who you're pretty much self-employed in this business. You need to be able to take care of yourself. KT is just a guy who he speaks it a little bit too honestly. Like all these guys want to make a shit ton of money. All these guys are trying to make sure that their lives are set up after they're gone um, for their grandkids, grandkids. Like they want the best for themselves. KT is just probably a little too direct with it. But all that being said, the Falcons would love it. Don't want that in your own division. Uh, the Seahawks would love it. That's still in the NFC. Granted, this one is too. The Jets could be making a move up here, but honestly, with all the draft capital you have, and again, you don't want to trade a billion like seconds and thirds just to be able to move up here. I think that this should just be a very small trade because you also don't want to threaten losing Malik Willis because I've heard the Falcons are actually quite intrigued. So if you want to get a third round pick, you got to go a very short distance. And honestly, I kind of dig it. The Giants are going to make a small trade up. I know Giants fans hate this, and I'm not going to actually fleece either team because, again, you're getting what you want. But I'm going to be sending a third round pick here and asking maybe for a fifth in return. Is the value minimal 100%? Is it even worth this? Probably not. But honestly, one, I'm going to trust the algorithm. Two, you're not, you're not losing anything. What the? Uh, we're not even doing a three round mock here, but it would give a chance for the Panthers to be able to get a third round pick. You're moving back one spot and still getting the guy that you are looking after. There you go. There you go. So with this pick, we are going to be going Kayvon Thibodeau out of Oregon. Charles Cross KT would be a phenomenal pairing. Number seven, of course, they're going to be going Malik Willis out of Liberty. That's the right thing to do. Leaving the Falcons at number eight. And I think that this could be Trevon Walker. He's obviously been in the state of Georgia his entire career there and very well might stick. Of course, you could talk about Kyle Hamilton here, who's an absolute God. And I wouldn't blame you. That's the thing. Uh, I think Kyle Hamilton would be the best option for the squad. Of course, with even like Amari Cooper off the market and stuff, I think Garrett Wilson could slash should be an option here. It's a, it's a tough one. And it's honestly a best case scenario because you have guys who are phenomenal at all ranges here like Garrett Wilson. He's going to be a great addition to the team. He's probably going to be wide receiver one day one, like phenomenal player. Uh, Trevon Walker needs some grooming, but honestly, I believe that Pease could probably develop him into a solid prospect. That being said, I mean, the edge rushers for the Tennessee Titans were honestly not that great. Like we didn't see that type of development. That was probably the big weak point there over in Tennessee. So I think that in Atlanta, it's not the same as Wink Martindale being able to develop Trevon Walker. So for that, I'm going to be taking Trevon out of the equation. It's Kyle Hamilton or Garrett Wilson. And I think that with the desperation for a wide receiver, and let's take a look into the second round. By your pick, you have Christian Watson. You're, if you're lucky, Sky Moore. Um, you're not probably going to have George Pickens on the board. So you're pretty much down to Christian Watson and maybe Sky Moore. You go in the second round, you might be able to get Lewis C and Jalen Petrie, Kirby Joseph, Jaquan Brisker, and even Dax. You guys know where I'm going here. We're going to throw a big one, a big curveball here. Garrett Wilson out of Ohio State. We've seen how much a wide receiver can really help out an offense. Safeties haven't always, I mean, speaking of a team that's invested a lot in a safety, uh, they haven't exactly panned out the way maybe you were hoping for. But at number nine, the Seattle Seahawks are sitting here and I mean, honestly, it's down to two players for me. I actually want to make this different than my other first round mock. You know, you got Trevon Walker here who could be, I mean, does not feel like a Seahawks player, just cr a crazy athlete, a uh, big fan of what he could do on the Seahawks. Or we could talk about Derek Stingley Jr., who I think would be a phenomenal player in the Seahawks scheme. Honestly, I think that if you give him time to develop, which is exactly what this team is kind of doing, you build the pieces and go best player available this could be a dream pick for them. Like you can get someone who could be potentially legendary lockdown. I have almost a blue chip grade on Derek Stingley. And that was looking at his years where he wasn't as into the game as maybe he was back in his championship year. But honestly, I would be a pretty big fan of Derek Stingley. Of course, you're going to say it's Russell Wilson for Derek Stingley, like in some other dudes. Yeah, that'd be a little bit rough, but 
I don't think Trevon Walker solves the problems as well as people think either. I really don't. And you have two second round picks. Like I know maybe Andrew Booth or Kyler Gordon could be there, but again, look at the edges on the board. I do think that Trevon Walker could be able to slip. I do. And the only issue is that Derek Stingley's here and I'm going to go Derek Stingley. I just feel like he's the Seahawk at the end of the day. You're going to throw a big curveball into the equation. Do I think he goes exactly top 10 if he tests out well? And he's had a pretty, like his medical clearance has been positive. He very well could be going back in the top 10. And we're just going to give an idea here that maybe he goes here at number nine. Number 10, you got the Jets back on the board. And we've taken away the number one receiver that I would love to send to this team. Drake London's probably going to be this pick, but we have to consider Trevon Walker here. I think that he would just be such a good grab. Yeah, you could have grabbed KT here and then maybe, maybe Derek Stingley. But honestly, Trevon Walker could be so fun. And I know this, obviously, the the coaches of the Jets are known for being able to develop edge talent. Like Robert Sala literally developed the Bosa, um, Nick Bosa. So I do have faith in Trevon Walker on the Jets. I do. And I think that'd be a phenomenal fit. I think that'd be something that I'd be very intrigued with. But again, with the edge depth on the board, people might be hyped up about Trevon, but I just really think that Drake London would be the best option for the team. So there he goes, Drake London, two top 10 wide receivers. Again, I do think that the hype is real and that this is going to be a big, big plus. Uh, I, spent, I said win and plus at the same time. I said plus, but still number 11, you got Washington on the board. And I honestly think that Jordan Davis should be going in this range. And we are going to be going back to the board and we're going to be trading back up with the chargers. They don't have many picks, but again, they're making some very win now moves. So we're going to make this trade. And someone corrected me saying that the value is about a this year and a next year, third to move up that range. We're doing a fourth. whoop de do be happy. Like it's just the way that happens. And this is going to be Jordan Davis. And you guys might say, damn, why would you trade up for him? Uh, Let me say, let me tell you why. So I think that the Vikings can nab him. We also have to keep in mind that Kyle Hamilton's on the board. So the Vikings can nab him. Uh, We could also see the Browns nab him. We could see even the Ravens snag him. Eagles, Washington, like all these teams could snag Jordan Davis. I don't think Washington would actually do it, but that might just be best player available. Jordan Davis is a phenomenal, phenomenal athlete. And at his size, we've just never seen anything like it. You know, now LA will have two dominant interior guys that we just, they're just freaks of nature. I think that'd be a great addition to the team. Number 12, this should be Kyle Hamilton or else Trevon Walker. I think both are just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, so. I'm going to go Kyle. Screw it. Uh, Sorry, Eagles fans. I think that that would be the best option. Browns, you know, again, let's talk about the Amari Cooper trade. I think that honestly for the value is a little bit of a fleece. You know, obviously you're just basically saying you're a fifth round pick and then you're trading back a little bit. Whoa. Like that, that in the sixth round, might I say, just kind of a crazy, crazy trade right there. I don't think that this offense is optimized for him but they have enough cap space. They're just basically telling Baker, like, listen, you literally don't have any options. You have an actual wide receiver one again, and he's not exactly washed up. So um, not saying Odell was just, he didn't fit properly, which again, we could see another Odell like situation here, but that being said, I do think that they're giving the best shot possible. And with that, I think Trevon Walker is going to be the pick. You're going to be able to pair him up with Miles Garrett. That is going to be a nasty, disgustingly creepy pairing, and I'm all for it. Number 14, we got the Ravens on the board, and this pick probably is going to be David Ojabo. I want to do a quick little quick little recap of who is still on the board for you guys, just so you know who is here. Uh, you still got some crazy good talent all over the board. Could even go Tyler Linderbaum. I don't think he fits. Again, we got a Michigan defensive coordinator now as the defensive coordinator here. That means David Ojabo is a perfect fit, continuing to develop him and make him into the superstar that he is. Number 15, you got the Eagles on the board, and I just still think this is a perfect fit. Jermaine Johnson, absolute freak of nature out of Florida State. He just screams Philadelphia to me, and I can just so see it. Number 16, we got the Eagles back on the board, and I think this is probably a perfect spot 
to look at probably a corner like Kyer Elam, I, I really do think he's going to be going a lot higher than people think. I do. Um, that being said, you could look at Traylon Burks. You know, you already know that if you're if you want to stick to pick 19, you're going to be guaranteeing yourself one of these top three. That's just the way it's going to roll. And I think that Washington Commanders could be one wide receiver, well, big wide receiver away from actually being super competitive. And I'd rather take that away from them. So going back to Traylon Burks for the squad, Jermaine Traylon Burks, and then leaving Washington here, of course, Carson Wentz, now the quarterback there. I still, I think that puts an emphasis on a position of legitimate need and that's linebacker. I don't think any more wide receivers are going to offer what they are looking for in the wide receiver room right now. Like, I just, I don't see it. You got Terry McLaurin there. And I just, I would rather have a larger six foot three, six foot four, six foot five wide receiver to be able to be a unique style. Could you trade back again and get George Pickens at the end of the first? Maybe, but why not just get the best linebacker on the board? Devin Lloyd's great in the run game as well. Super well-rounded all over the place. And he tested out. Okay. It was like a four, six, six, four, six, eight, 40. People are saying that it's bad. I'm like, I'm sorry. Uh, I think that's pretty damn solid given how that was not really an issue with his game. He played really fast. And like, again, the tape doesn't lie. The numbers, the numbers are numbers, but it's how you really play. It's how you use your speed. And I think the mentality and just his high football IQ allows him to maximize his speed the way that maybe someone who has better athleticism, but maybe worse processing, they might get to the ball at the same time. You know what I mean? Like that offers more of a higher ceiling to players like Christian Harris, but also it keeps a higher floor for guys like Devin Lloyd. Number 18, you got the Saints on the board and this could be Trevor Penning. It honestly could be. They might just say, screw it. We're going to go Trevor Penning. I don't think they have their answer there at tackle, but I do think they could find room to possibly re-sign somebody. I have no idea. They were not, they're not going to be able to get Teron Armstead. I just don't think so. But at this pick, you might as well take the shot on somebody who could be a legendary, and that's Jameson Williams. Giving a really good deep threat option to Dam- Jameis Winston is everything you need. Again, his number one receiver is Marquez Callaway for a portion of the season. And if I'm not mistaken, he ran a 4.740. This guy could be running the four threes. And I mean, that's not really a surprise compared to the entire class. But still, people are saying he was wide receiver one. I have Jahan Dotson over him. And then I have Chris Olave and him kind of in the same tier. Not groundbreaking stuff here. Obviously, the wide receiver room is pretty tight. But still, I think that's phenomenal. Number 19, the Eagles are sitting here. And honestly... The way I see it, I just I would love to trade back, but I really do want to get a better corner for the team like Kyer Elam than Trent McDuffie. I do. And I think that maybe a team like the Steelers would love it um, to be able to maybe move up a spot and secure Trevor Penning or Tyler Linderbaum. But I think that they're going to be happy with either situation because Abe Lucas in the third would be phenomenal. Uh, you know, Nicholas Petit Ferrer could be a solid option for the Steelers in another round. So I think that the Steelers are chilling right now. You could, of course, target a linebacker like N'Kobe Dean. I just do think that one of these picks will be moved or be moved up for. And for that, I might just I might just have to go Kyrie Elam here because I so see him as a Raider. I do. Or even the Cowboys might want to take uh, a chance on someone like Kyrie. I have, I have no idea. So with this being said, I am not going to trade back. I'm going to be going Kyrie Elam out of Florida here. I'm such a huge fan of him. Again, we know that there's going to be an offensive player in the mix. It's Howie Roseman. That's just the way it is. If it were me, I would go Jermaine Johnson, uh, probably Devin Lloyd and Kyra Elam, or probably like N'Kobe Dean and Kyra Elam. That's just the way I'd rock and something that I'd be a big fan of for the team as a whole. But for now, I think Kyra Elam is just super good in man as well as zone. I mean, he's just super well balanced, has a perfect body type, and he shut down Jameson Williams. So like that's another plus in a conference, not division in a conference. That's so weak. Being able to have a lockdown defense is what's going to really set you apart. Not a good offense because honestly, there's not really many good offenses out there. So having an okay offense is makes you competitive enough, but having a defense that could just shut down and create turnover after turnover, turnover after turnover, that is going to be what really wins you games. Cause you're not going to be in many shootouts. You're going to be able to 
just do whatever the hell you want. Number 20 with the Steelers, you are picking between two of the best options on the board. Trevor Penning would be phenomenal for this team, but I really do think the Steelers have fallen in love with Tyler Linderbaum, a guy who's a very mobile center. It could work really well with the scheme. Uh, put Kendrick Green over to guard and have him, Dotson, as well as Lindy, as your interior. Make that interior solidified. Keep it strong. Number 21, we got the Patriots. And this could be a Bill Belichick move to trade down, but we're going to be going to Kobe Dean here, who's going to be an outside linebacker. Blitzer could work as a mic as well. Really good in coverage um, as well. So number 22, the Raiders are on the board. And I actually think I'm going to take the advice from some of you Raiders fans in my comments section. And I am going to trade back here because Trevor Penning is still on the board. And I think going after a team, maybe in the NFC that could be looking for a tackle, even like the Cowboys would be a very smart idea. So looking at some teams that could use a tackle, you could look at green Bay, you could look at even Tampa. I think that all those wouldn't be too shabby of options. Um, But the more I look at it, the more I actually kind of want to trade the Cowboys to get him. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do that, but we might just go and trade in division um, or in conference, not in division. You could talk about the Dolphins, but I do think that the Dolphins might even go after uh, Teron Armstead. That being said, I don't know if he actually signs with the Dolphins. I don't really think that that would be a bright move for him. You know, you kind of have a pocket quarterback and I just, I'm not a huge fan of that. So with this pick, we are going to be trading back. The question is where, and you know what? We are actually going to be going the Dolphins route. The Dolphins are going to be trading up here with the Raiders. Uh, Obviously, I think that would be a pretty smart move for both sides because, again, Dolphins, you need to do something on the offense. Raiders, you also need to be able to acquire some more picks because linebackers are a pretty big need and you just lost out on the top two. So trading back for a third-round pick seems to be good enough. Of course, if you guys want to correct me on that, feel free to. We continue to develop day after day. And I think Trevor Penning would be the best option for the team, given what you might be losing later on. Number 23, we've got the Cardinals on the board. And I mean, again, let's do a quick little inventory check here. And nobody crazy has fallen yet. Devontae Wyatt might be this pick. Chris Olave would be a really fun one for the team. But again, you might want to emphasize the interior of the offensive line. Of course, there will be some really good players who might be there later on. So you could go that route. You could go corner here as well. Tariq Woolen would be a fun, fun, fun option for the team. But I'm going to get some help on the interior. You get Devontae White here out of Georgia. Just take a chance on him. I know the interior is not fully solidified. And this guy had a legendary, legendary combine. And he's been a very good player there on the Georgia defensive front. He's honestly, his talent during, like when you watch his tape is better than Jordan Davis. But Jordan Davis completely changed his entire body, his entire mindset over the offseason. So at least that's a plus. Number 24, you got the Cowboys on the board. And you know what? This is an easy pick. We're going Kenyon Green here out of Texas A&M. You're potentially losing a tackle as well. So Kenyon Green can play right tackle, left tackle, or any of the guard spots, which, of course, he can fill very easily. Big fan of that one. Then you got the Buffalo Bills here. And I think Zion Johnson just feels like a Bill just the way it rolls. And that's the way we're going to do it. Uh, Of course, you're taking away from an AFC rival in uh, the Tennessee Titans. And I think the Titans could be nabbing up a good wide receiver here. Honestly, Jahan Dotson and Chris Olave could be a really big plus. Of course, you could again, go to someone like Tyler Smith who can play offensive tackle as well. Losing a guard and due to cap casualties kind of hurts. And with the potential of Taylor Lewan not being there forever, you might actually want to take advantage of that because I think Tyler Smith is going to be a first rounder. The question is where, and it's going to be this pick or else it's going to be the next one. That that's just plain facts to me. And we're going to take it here. Uh, Three guards go in a row, but again, two of these guys are probably destined to be offensive tackles in the future, leaving the Buccaneers on the board. And I do think that probably going a wide receiver or else a corner is the best move. I've heard that they're trying to make a long-term deal with Chris Godwin. So with that being said, you go with a four, two, six burner at six foot four. That's just, that's just what you do. He's super smooth, really good ball skills, former wide receiver actually went to college as a wide receiver. So, I mean, again, the ceiling is sky high right there. And honestly, the expectations are not very high for Tampa Bay at the moment. So being able to relax in that and Zen 
probably the best thing you can do for your franchise. Number 28, you got the Packers on the board, and they honestly have their pick of the litter here. Chris Olave or Jahan Dotson. And again, I think both are phenomenal. You know, you pick your poison here. I think either team would be happy. Like any team who drafts Jahan would be happy with Chris and vice versa. I'm going to go with Jahan Dotson here. You know, he is somebody who was able to be a number one for a while. Chris Olave has always kind of felt like a number two. And even though Olave would probably be that, at least you know that Jahan Dotson's there to be able to make a wide receiver one type impact. Number 29, you got the Raiders on the board and Chris Olave could be a really good option for this team. He actually really could be, and I might pull that trigger. Um, I mean, offensive line, you could, again, look at one of these guys. I don't think that's the brightest move. Corner, definitely something I would target. Uh, interior defensive line, you still have some really good options too. But I'm actually going to go Chris Olave. You did lose out on Henry Ruggs. And um, when speed kills, hmm, pun intended, uh, you can at least get some more speed with Chris Olave. So get Chris Olave here, be able to make this roster at least competitive in the AFC best. So number 30, another AFC best team. That's obviously my joke because I the AFC West, but uh, I think they would be a phenomenal fit for Dax Hill after having an amazing combine. I do think that he will be in this range just the way it is uh, edge rushers. You could talk about someone like George Karloff just being the zone boy, a mafe, but Dax Hill going to be the guy who takes the cake. Number 31, you got the Houston Texans on the board again, again, Laramie Tunsil was traded for this pick. So Bengals fans, if you're wondering why he's not there, well, you got a five-star tackle. I think that going after a corner like Trent McDuffie might be the best thing you can do with this pick. Uh, he's going to be going in the first round. Again, I don't have, I have him as a third round pick, but that's just solely based off the talent, not based off the scheme. This is Lovey Smith's cover two. So I'm 100% going to stick Trent in here because that is an exact perfect fit. We ran a 4 4 4 40. So I think he actually answered the speed questions well enough. Number 32, you got the Lions ending off the first round. And I do think when you have a thir number 32 pick, you do take it on a QB. And Sam Howell, again, it's the end of the first. You blow a the end of the first round pick. It's not going to cripple your franchise like a top 10 pick would. You got a surefire prospect. Now get Sam Howell, who's going to be the highest ceiling out of any of these other quarterbacks. He's number one QB on a lot of people's boards. So that's the way it's going to end, guys. Let me know what you guys think. I know that there's some controversial things in here, but feel free to holler down in the comment section below. And of course, say why. We don't need any toxicity down in the comment section. Only good football discourse. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the far side. Peace.